Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning here at First English Lutheran Church in Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin. A special welcome to those of you of our congregation who are joining us online. And if you're a visitor joining us online, we're very glad you found us. I'm Pastor Cheryl, the fortunate pastor of this congregation, and we do hope that you experience God's presence and joy as you worship with us today. We have um, very few announcements for you today. The new members class will be starting two weeks from today. Let us know if you're going to be joining in. Um, it's always fun to meet new friends, so if you are a regular member and you'd like to come to the new member classes and get to know the new people and also brush up on your Lutheran understanding and your con old confirmation lessons from a long time ago, you are welcome to come too. Be right after the service starting the 23rd for five weeks. And now let's quiet our hearts and get ready for worship. Please stand as we have some moments of silence together. Almighty God, we enter your presence this morning with gratitude in our hearts for especially the beauty around us at this time of year, for the sunshine on the colors and the uplift that brings to our hearts. Help us to carry that kind of joy and beauty into our worship this morning where you offer us beautiful things of the Spirit, precious, precious truths that your Son shines on to bring us life. Quiet our hearts, relieve the burdens we're carrying, enable us to hear and see and receive all that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who is eager to forgive us and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus loves it. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let's stand, remain standing for the Kyrie and the Canticle of Praise. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, your bountiful goodness fills all creation. Keep us safe from all that may hurt us, that whole and well in body and spirit, we may with grateful hearts accomplish all that you would have us do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, Faith. Good morning, Faith. Good morning, Faith. Good morning. She said, am I here at the wrong time? Well, you kind of are. This, this is a different time. You're here now because the children are going to be leaving for Sunday school in just a couple minutes, and they wanted to be sure they saw you too. She said she was glad she could see you too. So you're there. Um, Faith, have you ever been really sick? How sick? She said, so sick, she felt like she was going to die. Oh, that bad. Yeah, did you have a fever? Did you feel like running around? Did you feel like eating? Oh, she said, no, I threw up. Okay, you don't want to eat if you're throwing up. No, no, okay. And what else happened when you were sick? She said, I slept, and I slept, and I slept, and I cried, 
Did you go to the doctor? And what did the doctor do? He said, I, I went to the doctor and he checked me over and pretty soon, and gave me some medicine, and pretty soon I felt a lot better. So what if there had been no medicine to make you better? It would have been awful. You're right. And what if nobody could help you get better? It would be so scary. Do you think your mama and daddy would do everything they could? But what if that didn't help? She said, I don't know what we would have done. Well, today in our story, we're going to hear about some people who have leprosy. And that is an illness that nobody had a cure for back when Jesus was here. What did they do? They just couldn't do anything to get better. Well, Jesus did help them. So you listen carefully to the story in your Sunday school today, and we'll listen to the sermon, and we'll find out what Jesus does when we don't have any hope to get better. I know it sounds good. Let's thank Jesus he gives us hope, okay? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for hope. And that you help us get better. In Jesus' name, amen. The children may leave for Sunday school now. Our first reading today is from 2 Kings chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. Naaman commander of the army of the king of Aram, was a great man and in high favor with his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Arameans, on one of their raids, had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, Go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of garments. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you my servant Naaman, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go, wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away, saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farfar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? And he turned away and went away in a rage. But his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company. He came and stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 111. 
We'll read responsibly by verse. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are your works, works, O Lord, Lord pondered by all who delight in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. You, you cause, cause your, your wonders, wonders to, to be remembered. remembered. You, you are, are gracious, gracious and, and full of compassion. of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You, you have, have shown, shown your people the power of your works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All your precepts are sure. They stand, they stand fast, fast forever, forever and ever, because, because they, they are, are done, done in truth, truth and equity. equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this have a good understanding. God's praise endures forever. Please stand. Gospel according to Luke, the 17th chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Master, Jesus, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean, but the other nine? Where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. I wonder what this story would have been like without Jesus. I guess we wouldn't be talking about it today, would we? Nothing was that unusual about this story. Just, just a group of people with leprosy walking around in an area between here and there. No place to call home. This was absolutely true for people with leprosy. There was no place to call home. Perhaps there had been before. Before, be, before the skin disease took over and they were isolated from their families and ostracized from their communities, forced into groups with others just like them, people they couldn't contaminate because they were already contaminated, outcast, unclean, contagious, unwanted, and feared. People who according to the Jewish law, had been put out of the community. In Leviticus, the 13th chapter, it said, They shall wear worn, torn clothes and let the hair of their heads be disheveled. 
They shall cover their upper lip and cry out, unclean, unclean. They shall remain unclean as long as they have the disease. They are unclean. Now, they haven't asked for this. They've done nothing to deserve it. It's just the way it's landed for them, and there is no cure. And so we see a group of people with a terrible skin disease wandering without hope, although it does seem they've heard of Jesus. Jesus heals people, they'd heard. But how can they get near enough to ask for help? There are always so many people around him, and they're not allowed to go where the people are. So what are their chances? Except for this day. This day when Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem where he'll be falsely accused, accused, falsely tried, falsely convicted, and violently crucified. Except for this day, when Jesus is where they are, between places, not here or there. And just before Jesus enters a village where they can't go, they see him. Is that the rabbi? The one who might help us? The one we've heard heals? Is that the one who might give us back our lives, return us to our families, set us free from this prison? Is that the one? (laughs) Now, there were ten of these people, ten people with leprosy, and they are bonded by their uncleanness. But they aren't the same. For one of them is a foreigner, a Samaritan, a person hated by the Jewish people, a person who was considered by them as unclean even before he had leprosy, a doubly unclean, doubly unworthy, doubly ostracized person. Let's say in today's terms, a person of color who is mentally ill and very poor and also a refugee. Double, triple strikes against them. Many reasons to leave them up to a government agency or an institution or send them back to wherever they've come from. Now, all ten know their place. All ten know the rules. And they know they'll have to encounter Jesus from a distance. And so they shout out from a distance, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. They don't ask for a healing. They ask for mercy. They don't go into a synagogue to do things exactly right because they can't. And they don't go up close to receive Jesus' touch because they can't do that either. And they don't explain their story. They don't need to because Jesus knows. Before they see him, Jesus sees them. And here is the crux of the story. Jesus sees them. Whenever Jesus sees anyone, including you and me, and sees them or us for what we are and where we are and how helpless we are to save ourselves, whenever and however that happens, Jesus knows us and knows what we need and what to do to save us next. Jesus sees all of us, and whether we cry from a distance, have mercy on me, or if we're even wondering if he's there at all, Jesus sees, and he knows, and he cares. And Jesus reaches across the distance, any distance, to save us. 
just as he did for the ten. The nine Jewish men and the one Samaritan who'd been allowed to travel with them. Jesus shouts back, Go show yourselves to the priests. Now notice he didn't say, You are healed, go in peace. Or your faith has made you whole. Or come closer so I can see if you're really serious about this. Or get on your knees and pray the sinner's prayer. All Jesus said was, go show yourselves to the priests. Now what does that mean? <laughs> there were rules for leprosy and other contagious skin diseases that... In the rules, there was an allowance that people just might get better. And if they did, they would be, should be allowed to return to their homes and their former lives. However, it wasn't up to the individuals to judge if they were healed or not. It was left to the priests, who would engage in a detailed procedure, which included a physical examination. And then there would be a complex ritual of cleansing. Only then could they be considered clean again? And it was a law designed for the protection of everyone. So when Jesus sends them to the priests, he's following the Jewish law and expecting them to obey. And they do. They obey him without asking anything further. Their, their obedience is a tremendous step of faith because they're not healed at that moment. But their trust, they trust this master called Jesus is healing them. And so they go. Except for the Samaritan who has nowhere to go. According to the Jews, he would always be unclean because he wasn't who they were. The priest might not receive him. And even if he did, the priest couldn't cleanse him from his racial and religious differences. Is there no hope then for this man who was a Samaritan foreigner? Is he healed from his illness but can never be completely clean? Never be completely clean in the sight of the privileged ones? For some reason, he just doesn't seem to worry about that. For he's filled with joyful gratitude. He doesn't just obey Jesus as the others do, although that was enough for his healing. Instead, he breaks Jesus' command to go to the priest, and he comes running up to Jesus, to the living one, the source of healing, the source of goodness, acceptance, and love to the only one who could declare him wholly worthy and completely healed. The only one who will soon die on the cross to take on himself this man's uncleanness and sin and give him in exchange the righteousness of God and eternal life. Of course, the man doesn't know all this, but Jesus does. And I suspect this man's gratitude just warms Jesus' heart. This double outcast who runs to him, falls before him on the ground and says, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As he praises God's goodness. This guy gets it. He gets that Jesus' power comes from God. He gets that he was helpless and now is healed. He gets it that he was lost and now is found. He knows he needs a savior, not just a healing. He needs rescue, not just attention. He, in Lutheran language, knows he's been bound by sin and cannot free himself. But now, he knows he's saved and rescued and freed. And his response isn't just to follow the rules or keep the traditions. His response is to praise God 
and thank his Savior. Jesus notices that he's the only one who comes running to him, the only one praising and thanking, the only one who really understands what he just received, the only one who realizes his healing has come straight from the hand of God through the Son of God by the power of the Holy Spirit. This was the amazing grace the Apostle Paul would later expound upon. For it is by God's grace you've been saved through faith. And that faith is not your own. It's a gift of God so that nobody can boast about their faith. Jesus speaks to this one who is praising God. And how I wish we could have heard Jesus' loving tone of voice. Maybe even some laughter. Oh, get up and go. This gift of faith is now your faith. Faith has saved you. Go. You're healed. Get up and go. Jesus says to you and me too, the faith I give you has saved you. You are healed. You are restored. You are made new. You get your life back. Hear these words, people of God. Take them into your souls. No matter where you are or who you are or where you've been, you have a Savior, a rescuer, a healer who calls out to you and welcomes you home. He gives you his grace. He gives you the gift of faith. He forgives you. He heals you. He offers you a life that will be filled with gratitude and praise to the God who loves and created you. And even if you feel like a foreigner within your own life, Jesus welcomes you home. Jesus is your home. So get up and go. Breathe deeply, receive completely, and wonder with the Samaritan. Where would my story be without Jesus? Amen. Let's sing together. Please stand softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling.
Let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. Gracious God, we give you thanks for church leaders, for bishops and pastors and deacons. Inspire leaders of the church to proclaim your mighty deeds, that your faith, saving faith may be known to all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Majestic God, we give you thanks for land and water, seed time and harvest. Break down boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of your creation. Bring renewal and restoration to places affected by natural disasters, including hurricanes, famine, and flooding. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Mighty God, we give you thanks for those in our community, nation, and the world who work for justice and peace. Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those marginalized by race, ethnicity, or religion. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. Merciful God, we give you thanks that you hear the cries of those in need. Restore to community those who are stigmatized by illness, those who feel rejected, or those who live in isolation. Send healing to all who suffer, especially Harlan Arndt, Sandy Laspa, Wanda Wright, Ryan Aleg, and Doug Ritzkowski, who will be having surgery this week. We pray, too, for those who live with chronic pain of mind and body. Give them courage and hope so they can reach out for help and feel your presence near. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Faithful God, we give you thanks for the healing ministries of this congregation. Equip those who visit, care, and pray for the sick. Equip those for prayer on the prayer chain. And we pray for those who are launching the new visitation ministry. We pray also that you will give insight to medical health care providers, to doctors and nurses, and home health care people, and all practitioners of the medical profession. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your faithful people who have gone before us to your glory. Renew our trust in your eternal promises of mercy, redemption, and new life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, your mercy is, is great. great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share, please share the Lord's peace with one another.
Please stand for the offering prayer. Let us pray. Gracious, Gracious God, God, in your Lord, great Lord, love, Lord, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need through Jesus Christ, who sets the table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which Jesus was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. In remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of this cup, do it in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, oops, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us out alive with justice, peace, hope, and love. Join me in praying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Today, all those who believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and as their Savior are welcome to partake in Holy Communion here, whether or not you are a member here or of a different denomination, you are welcome at this table. Come, the feast is ready. Very wonderful ELCA and other churches in Stevens Point. Marty Haugen event yesterday. Marty Haugen has written so many of our wonderful hymns. The hymn we're singing during the communion. Marty Haugen wrote, healer of our only hymn, after the Challenger accident. So it gives you some context to why he wrote that hymn and what it's about. So as you sing it, 
Think about that. Ainsley, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Ellie, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Amen. Let's close today by singing, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Go in peace. Pray without ceasing. Christ is beside you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a great day and a great week. We'll see you next week.